Asiana 214 Heavy, runway 28 left, cleared to land. It all leads to some troubling questions. Were the Asiana pilots flying into danger? Did they face an extraordinary risk at an airport notorious for difficult landings? Investigators search for a lead in the crash of Asiana 214. Air traffic controllers provide some answers. Controllers tell investigators that it was a normal day, except for the fact that some runway equipment was not in operation. Welcome to Asiana Airlines. Hello. So, let us meet the final part of the journey from South Korea to the wonderful city of San Francisco in this episode. Okay, you can sit down now, get comfortable, and brace yourself. The crew now wants you to have a wonderful touchdown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. Thanks for flying with us. I hope you had a pleasant experience during your flight with us. We are currently nearing San Francisco International Airport, and our estimated landing time is 30 minutes from now, about 11.30 a.m. local time. First of all, San Francisco has clear and sunny weather. The air temperature is rather comfortable and 17 degrees Celsius. I'm sure it is the best day to go to this vibrant city, which has many famous buildings and friendly people. I want to take this opportunity on behalf of Asiana Airlines, a member of Star Alliance, to thank all of you for choosing Asiana Airlines to fly today. Thank you for your stay in San Francisco. We look forward to serving you soon. The final phase of Asiana Airlines flight 214, coming from Seoul, Korea, a distance of 5,237.47 miles is near. There are 307 people on this flight, from passengers to the crew, each with a different purpose. Tourists who visit this area for the very first time prepare themselves for the most memorable journey of their lives. Families beam at each other, and other business people make the final adjustments of what they are going to present to their employers or clients. While many people are waiting to meet their dear ones, some people perceive this flight as the end of months or years of separation. While it's business as usual at the Vitals crowded center of California, it is a new chapter for the others. It's an atmosphere of quiet excitement, tense surroundings of the cabin, and steady drone of the engines. The weather outside is great. It's bright and high and sunny over California, and the skyline seems to go on and on. There is very little wind blowing across the city, making the conditions for what should be the perfect landing as perfect as could be. However, due to good weather conditions, tourists will be privileged to experience the beautiful and familiar view of San Francisco Bay. As for the guests on board, the Golden Gate Bridge symbolizes hope at the end of the dark tunnel, one might suppose. Auf der linken Seite jetzt die Golden Gate, Alcatraz und Downtown San Francisco. Left side, Golden Gate, Alcatraz Island and Downtown San Francisco. If the distance to the runway is increased, the degree of excitement to perform the modeled movements also increases. Now at this time, technology, human skill and trust are created in an experience that is not another journey. Before them lies the metropolis of San Francisco, with all its attractions and is under the culture. Right now, they feel safe and do not know what lies ahead of them. That is why they trust the crew. It is the last practice of Asiana Airlines, flight 214-some phenomenon that will soon become regular. It was the morning of July 6, 2013. Asiana Airlines flight 214 was a Boeing 777 flying to San Francisco International Airport. Being one of the safest and most reliable commercial aircraft of captive aviation, the aeroplane was a perfect example of contemporary clues. Boeing was again a popular make for long-haul travel due to its meeting-high reputation among airlines and their customers, all thanks to the Boeing 777. The authors revealed that companies like Asiana Airlines attach prime importance to the aspect of safety. It was a very professional airline, which was famous for its quality concern, and the aeroplanes were operated by professional crews. Until this period, it boasted of a low incidence rate when it came to safety-related concerns, clear proof that Royal set high standards that were reflected in all activities. Captain Lee Kang Kook was the pilot flying for this flight. The first officer was sitting on the left-hand side of the cockpit at the time of the accident. He was not a stranger when it came to aviation, as he boasted of 9,700 hours of flight. Although his total flying hours were fairly decent, he performed a mere 43 hours of flying time on a Boeing 777. This was a part of carrying out this transition to this advanced model systematically. 
a procedure that insisted on accurate training and supervision. For the duration of this important period of his development, First Officer Lee Jong Min sat beside him in the right-hand seat as his instructor and pilot monitored. Lee Jong Min, a flight captain for Korean Air, was a very experienced pilot who had logged over 12,000 hours of flying experience that included the Boeing 777 aircraft. His work was critical, managing the attitude and positioning while briefing Captain Lee on the maneuvers involved in flying this airframe during the last few seconds. Of course, there were more in the cockpit. As with any other long trip, there were two extra pilots on board, a relief captain and a relief first officer, making a total of four pilots on board the ship. Their role was to relieve the line or flying defenders during the cruise segment as the actual pilots required appropriate rest before meeting the challenges of approaching and landing the aircraft. It is easily applicable during long flights, especially those that cross time zones, such as the flight from South Korea to San Francisco. While being quite organized and proper with the crew, as well as outlining good flying systems, the challenge of incorporating a captain during the training process only heightened things. Even though First Officer Lee Jong Min monitored the approach and maintained a lookout for any help needed, Captain Lee Kang Kook was the one responsible for performing the landing. The Boeing 777 was steadily descending at one of the busiest airports in the United States of America, with the final approach laid down. Hence, there was apparent impressiveness as the team worked with efficiency. Their movements and verbal intonation dictated professionalism and knowledge resulting from practice. Nevertheless, inherent unpredictability in aviation operations would soon manifest itself. The abilities and judgment skills of every person in the cockpit indeed would be challenged, as would all flights. On this flight, the person who was on the left seat of the control was the experienced Captain Lee Kang Kook a brilliant pilot filled with aviation experience after he had flown as many as 9,700 hours. He only had 43 flying hours with the Boeing 777, however. He was not fully familiar with the aircraft. This was a part of his continuous transition towards this more refined strategy, which was, however, more sensitive and which required oversight and talent development. This system, which was developed in a way that would fairly distribute the workload among the crew, as well as maintain their alertness, is a good example of how much precision modern aviation entails. There are individual responsibilities of each of the flight crew members to provide the safest and most efficient flight possible. On this day of the year, while Bader and Yi were piloting US Airways Flight 214 towards touchdown, at the San Francisco International Airport, they were ready and willing to perform an ordinary landing, the long length of 28L in San Francisco International Airport, and the strong pavement allow the airport to be suitable for large and wide-body planes, such as Boeing 777. This runway, which forms a major part of the airport's functional activities, is meant to accommodate large volumes of traffic and specific international flight requirements. Its dimensions are 11,381 feet in length and 200 feet in width, which means that only international aircraft, whether passenger or cargo, and with or without fuel can have sufficient and safe takeoff and landing space. The airport itself looks very high-tech and features an instrument landing system, ILS, which is a precision radio navigation used for the approach to the airport. The ILS is especially useful in conditions of bad weather or limited visibility because it describes precise information in real time about the location of the aircraft concerning the runway. It furthermore guarantees that the descent path and the alignment of the aircraft parallel to the runway centerline can be maintained adequately by providing not only lateral guidance but also vertical information. Impressive atmospheric conditions prevailed on the day of the accident, which presented no significant weather-related threats to the published instrumental approach. However, the visual approach included additional difficulty for the captain, Lee Kang Kook, who had recently been transitioning to flying Boeing 777. But the absence of ILS tells the crew it has to scrub accurately some factors, such as ground speed and rate of descent, and more importantly, they all are very well aligned with the runway in sight all the time, which requires exceptional communication and coordination. 
the advanced facilities of runway 28L gave an excellent background for what should have been a normal landing. However, the role of human factors is revealed in the last seconds of executing the approach, identifying the great boundary between the technological advancements and the professional pilots who control the technology. Of fundamental importance for the instrument landing system is the glide slope. That helps pilots have the plane descend at some constant angle and ensures continued adherence to the correct approach, glide path, as the aeroplane comes down to land on the runway. It provides feedback at a level of detail by informing of either overshot or low of a plane during approaches and making the necessary alterations at hand, thus ensuring successful on-flight touching points on landing. This computerized guidance assists the crew in maintaining the right descent rate, reducing workload, and ensuring accuracy in a conventional approach. But on that very day, the glide slope of runway 28L was not operating. Since the pilots could not control their angle of descent with the computerized guidance, this technical failure created another complexity in the approach. Together, these operational challenges imposed a huge load on the flight crew. They could count on lateral guidance they would get from the localizer, but the correct rate of descent, without the aid of glide slope, depended a great deal on adjustments which would need to be carefully done by pilots while approaching the destination, which incidentally happens to be one of America's busiest airports. To keep the aircraft on the proper glide path, the crew had to manually regulate its fall. Despite the lack of the glide slope, the localizer continued to function, giving the approach a lateral direction. Such a fact that Asiana Airlines could let a pilot with merely 43 hours of Boeing 777 experience fly a plane into one of the world's busiest airports and potentially kill 307 people is utterly ridiculous. From an aviation safety perspective, this catastrophe was not only avoidable, but also extremely avoidable by such negligence of training levels and excess dependence on flawed technology.